there, it's Red. I just wanted to make a video talking about the movie Divergent. I went and saw the midnight release with my brother and my best friend, and I have to give them credit. I feel like they stayed pretty true to the book. I mean, you can't have an adaptation without changes. It's just not realistic. I mean, seriously, nobody wants to sit through a six hour movie going over every detail of the book. It's interesting in the book, but that doesn't always translate well to film. Despite that, I felt like they stayed really true to the story. I was nervous about Shailene Woodley being cast as Triss, especially because I've only seen her in a couple of things. I saw her in The Secret Life of the American Teenager, and then I saw part of that movie, The Descendants, once with George Clooney, so I've only seen a little bit of her. However, once the movie started playing, like, she is Triss. She really played out Triss to the way I imagined her to be. It was almost kind of like having it play from my head to the movie, which was, like, it was cool. It was cool. I feel really weird because I feel like he played four extremely well, almost perfectly, and yet somehow I crush on the book for a little bit more. In all fairness, though, I don't think it's his fault. When Jay Courtney came out as Eric, I didn't particularly crush on Eric in the book. I didn't really have any strong feelings toward him in the book. But when Jay Courtney came on screen with the hair and the gauges and... Oh my god, was that look working for him. Like, I was really digging him as Eric. I've seen Jay Courtney in other things and... I don't know, I never really thought much about him. But the way they dressed him up as one of the Dauntless... I felt like Theo James did not stand a chance. I feel like Theo James just didn't hold up to that for me. But my best friend would disagree with you. She really liked Theo James. That being said, Theo James is still pretty damn hot. I was really interested to see Miles Teller as Peter, but Peter ended up not being quite as big of a character in the movie as he was in the book. For the parts that Peter had, I feel like Miles Teller did a good job. I didn't hate him as much as I did in the book. I really hated Peter in the book. What I'm really interested in seeing is Miles Teller as Peter in Insurgent. I am really looking forward to seeing more of this character and what he's going to do with this character once he has more opportunity. It's just really nice to see Miles Teller in sort of a non-funny role. He had a more serious role in The Spectacular Now. I mean, he really did well in those dramatic parts in that movie. Overall, though, he was still kind of a funny character who just didn't take anything seriously. So to see him more in a solidly darker role, I feel like it was a nice change. Kate Winslet did not exactly play Janine Matthews quite as I imagined, but I think I liked her better, but I am a huge fan of Kate Winslet. Like, I love Kate Winslet. I wish that she had more time on screen in the movie. That wouldn't make sense, because Janine Matthews already had a bigger role in the movie than she did in the first book, Divergent. So they already gave Kate Winslet a little bit more. But if I could have it my way, I'd just have Kate Winslet on the screen all the time, so... I loves me some rose. So I'm going to get into more of the spoiler sections of this video, talking more about individual scenes. So if you have not seen the movie yet, I recommend coming back to this once you have. So the part where Trish jumps off the building, I just like hold my breath. It was just, it was much longer of a jump than I thought it was from my imagination. The zip lining scene was crazy. I mean, it just looks so scary and like so much fun at the same time. Like, I can't blame any of the Dauntless for doing that because it just, it looks crazy, insane, and fun. Like, just, oh my god, it, it was just, it kept going. It just kept going. Like, my imagination did not capture the zip line scene like they did in this movie. It was just way better. I like how the guns have like these transmitter bullet things that made it feel like you were shot with a real bullet even though you weren't. It just projects this pain. In the book, I imagine them like paintballs. I don't remember if in the book it, they were actually paintballs or if I'm just making this up in my head because for some reason that's how I imagined it so I don't know if they changed it for the movie or I just don't remember the book properly. But I don't know, I just thought that, that was like a really cool like addition to the whole scene. I do wish the ferris wheel scene was a little bit longer. Like I loved that part in the book where she's just dangling there and he's just like I'll figure out a way to get you down and you know she feels like she's gonna fall and then he has to move the whole ferris wheel to get her down and just I really like that scene in the book so I would have liked to have seen that in the movie but 
can't have it all. Oh, when Triss gets to the top of the tower and just kicks Molly's ass, like, yes. Was I the only one that just wanted to punch her brother in the face? Maybe the erudite should be in charge, like, ooh, like you're just gonna turn your back on everything because you think you're so smart now, and you think everybody's so smart now, and you're just gonna feed into all of that propaganda, like, Triss was raised better than that, so I know you were raised better than that. What is with that? I don't think he was that big of a jerk in the book at that scene that I remember, but they kind of heightened it in the movie, which I don't blame them. I feel like it just kind of roused more emotions that way. But I wanted to punch him in the face, man. Dude, punch him in the face. Like, how do you talk to your sister like that? I don't care if it is factions before blood. I don't care. I don't care if it is factions before blood. I don't care. Don't talk to your sister that way. Like, she came all this way to see you, risking getting in trouble, and you're just going to talk to her like that? Like, seriously? You were raised better than that. Your parents raised you better than that. Come on now. Don't make me punch you in the face for this. The scene where Peter and Al and them go to throw her over the edge into the river. For me, I felt like it wasn't quite as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. You don't actually know that it's Peter that's one of the ones there you really just focus on Al because of you know the later scene where he kills himself so I would have liked to have seen that maybe just a little bit longer just you know heighten the drama a little bit but just like in the book in the movie I just like I love this part where she doesn't just automatically go oh no it's okay no like he tried to throw her over a cliff this is her friend I understand that he's scared I understand that they're under this tremendous amount of stress, but does a weak character make it okay to do that to your friends, to do that to real people? No, it does not. I didn't feel bad in the book for Al when it came to this. I did not feel bad in the movie. I feel bad that he could not find the strength in himself to be what it takes to be a Dauntless, that he gave in so easily. I don't think that he's a bad person. However, you don't do that to your friends. You just don't. So when she stands up to him and she's just like, you will never touch me again or I will kill you, yes. Finally, a female character that doesn't just roll over. I feel like I see male characters doing that kind of stuff and go them, but I feel like not enough female characters really stand up and put their foot down. He tried to throw her over Cliff. If you read the book, you know he tried to do a little bit more than that. So she put her foot down, and yeah, she might have felt bad because of the decision he made later, but I am glad she put her foot down. But I am glad that she stood up to him and she held her ground. Like, I respected her as a character so much more for that. Kind of going with the strong female character thing, I really like how in the simulation with four they made it more about sexual assault than intimacy like it is in the book because in the book she has a fear of intimacy that's what her fear sort of revolves around in the movie four gets on top of her and tries to assault her tries to taunt her like oh i thought you were brave i thought you were fearless she clearly and repeatedly says no. He does not listen. Keep in mind that this is simulation four, not real four. When he doesn't listen, she kicks him. Again, she stood up to herself even against somebody that she deeply cares about. Somebody that she possibly thinks she might love. The first person she's had any real sort of intimacy and feelings for she stands up against them and she holds her ground knowing this is not okay, this is not what she wants. And she sticks to her no and she defends herself over it. And not to go like women power on you guys, but seriously, like way to empower girls and women watching this movie. I really liked that little change. I feel like younger generations really are influenced by what they see in the media, whether they're aware of it or not. So I really like that there's such a popular movie out there that demonstrates the situation in a way where the girl fights back. You know, she stands her ground. She doesn't automatically just go beating them up or anything. She says no. She makes her intentions very clear. Another thing I really liked relating to this, and those were all thoughts that I had when I originally watched the movie, Following watching the movie, I read this article that my friend had sent me, and it was addressing some of the points that I was making. One of which that I didn't really quite catch the first time I watched the movie, but 
I really respected it. Another point sort of relating to this that the article pointed out that I didn't have as an immediate thought watching the movie, but I'm glad they pointed it out so that I can recognize this and appreciate this about the movie. Outside of the simulation, in real life, you know, for interest, they're getting intimate, they're sharing a kiss, they're really sharing their feelings for each other. And she straight up says that she doesn't want to take things too fast, she doesn't want to go too far. And you know what? He completely respects it. Not only does it demonstrate for guys watching this movie how to react when a girl expresses those feelings, but not only that, I like how it actually portrays a guy that does act like that because there are guys that do respect women. There are guys that do respect a woman's right to go slow. And there are guys that don't want to move that fast either. I feel like you never hear about them. They're hardly ever talked about. But here you have four that represents them. Like, not every girl out there believes that you don't exist. I know you guys exist. I know that there are men out there that deeply respect women. And honestly, vice versa. Girls, don't go pressure on your guys if that's not something they're ready to do. Just because they're guys doesn't mean that's something they are ready to do in a relationship. Some guys do want to go slow too. Or whatever kind of relationship you're in. Guy on guy, girl on girl, whatever. I really... I just really liked how they had these dynamics in the movie that just really showed respecting your partner's wishes. And I liked how they showed you standing up for yourself even in an intimate relationship. So I kind of went on a little bit of a female women empowerment rant tangent, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving on with the rest of the movie, the scene where her mom dies just... <laughs> She dies a little bit differently than she does in the book. Not hugely differently, just a little bit. But just the part where Tris, she's just over her mom and she's crying and she can't breathe and she's got this look on her face and it's just totally heart-wrenching and it just like, it made me want to go hug my mom and it just, I don't know, it was just really sad. It was a great scene, it was a great, great, great scene, but it was really sad. The part where the dad died too, like that was really sad, but for some reason, like, it didn't get to me quite as much as the scene with the mom did. I think it's because it wasn't quite as drawn out as the scene with her mom was. Maybe it's because she and her mom were so close. Her mom never cared about her switching factions. You know, her mom loved her so unconditionally. And I believe that her dad loved her pretty unconditionally too. I think he was just really pissed off at her. But I think that she and her mom had such a special relationship so that her emotions and that heartbreak it just really came out in that scene with her mom where I feel like it lacked a little bit with the dad but they were both super sad scenes like they were just sad I didn't quite hate Marcus as much in the movie as I did in the book I really hope to maybe see more of that in the next movie because it's just I feel like he's a character you're really genuinely meant to dislike and I feel like I didn't dislike him in the movie as much as I wanted to as much as I did in the book so I'd like to see a little bit more on that. Overall, I really liked this movie. I don't know if it'd be different for somebody that did not read the book. For me, I was just so excited. I really felt like I was watching a better version of my imagination on screen. It was just, it was so awesome. It was so cool. I just feel like the movie was a very, very good and faithful adaptation with very minor changes. The changes that were made just did not alter the storyline in huge, huge ways. I'm just not a nitpicky person when it comes to movie adaptations. I try to judge a book and a movie on their own merit, the best I can anyway. I really don't nitpick little changes. I feel like that's just dumb. It's, I don't know, I feel like it keeps you from enjoying something that's good. But overall, I recommend this movie. I would check it out. I thought it was a very good adaptation, and I cannot wait for the second movie. So that is all for my Divergent movie discussion. Thank you guys for watching. I will have more videos up soon, and I will talk to you guys later.